Dr. Jaffe, can you explain the connection between the liver and the thyroid and what type of liver support do you recommend? Interesting question. Uh, from a Western medical point of view, uh, the thyroid and the liver are two essential parts of the human body that don't have a lot of connection with each other. But by the way, in Chinese medicine, where I did an apprenticeship, they have an intimate connection. <clears throat> because in Chinese medicine, you see the physical part of the body, <clears throat> but you also look at its function and how that function can be dynamic and how systems can be interdependent, how they can be in harmony with each other, or they can be in conflict with each other. So your liver is the gland of the body that produces many different kinds of protein. It produces many different kinds of carriers. It produces many things that are essential for quality of life. So having a healthy liver is really important. And the liver is also responsible for passing the blood through tiny little um, capillaries, through tiny little regions where Kupfer cells cleanse the surface of the cells as they flow through the liver. So the liver also is a major detoxifying organ. So it's anabolic, it builds you up, it's detoxifying in that it helps take toxins away. And then it produces bile, which can take fat soluble toxins and through the biliary tree, put them in the intestine. And if you have a healthy fiber intake, then you bind those toxins to fiber and they're quickly removed from the body. But if your diet is deficient in unprocessed fiber, such as Perk Regularity Guard, if you don't have 40 to 100 grams a day of unprocessed fiber, then chances are the bile will get reabsorbed, and that is what's called enterohepatic recirculation of toxins. Not recommended, but often very common in people's um, lives. And the feeling is that periodically you just get tired or you just get irritable or you just don't feel right in your right upper flank because your liver is swollen just a little bit. <clears throat> the thyroid, on the other hand, is one of the important sources of energy. So if you need quick adrenaline-like energy, you look to the adrenal glands. But if you need sustainable energy, you know, like what keeps you warm, you know, in the cold, that's your thyroid. So it turns out that when the liver is strong and removing toxins and producing all of these helpful proteins, then the thyroid is more likely to work less hard, be repaired more easily, and to have less problem uh, clinically. When you look at thyroiditis, when you look at uh, the uh, common thyroid um, inflammatory or autoimmune condition, and the whole continuum of those conditions, you find out that people who have impaired Kupfer cells in their liver have less ability to take the toxins out of the blood, and then they're more likely to have problems with their energy system, both adrenal and thyroid, but the thyroid is often the one that people pay attention to. So from a functional point of view, there's a lot of conversation that goes on between the liver and the thyroid. From an anatomical, uh, physiological point of view, they seem more independent until you get into the system's biology, and then you find out that the way in which the liver supports the rest of the body and takes harm away from the body is intimately related to the thyroid's ability to maintain your energetic level. And when your thyroid is distressed, you'll very often be cold in the morning. And we call that hypothyroidism. And we can measure thyroid stimulating hormone, free T3, free T4, and identify when the thyroid is being overworked or when it's well, well reserved. So from a functional standpoint, there is a great connection between the two uh, from a uh, usual um, mechanistic model of medicine. Uh, there's very little connection between the two. Uh, but uh, because I've been curious and, and cross-trained, uh, I'm often able to make associations and relationships that um, are seen in other medical models, but are absent from our rather advanced but rather mechanistic allopathic models.